Welcome to another in the series of the BA 2 Plus Calculator. For this one, we're going to look at some simple interest and we're going to look at the date function on the calculator and finding the days between the dates. First, we're going to start with some theory. For the simple interest, these are the symbols that you're going to be using, I, P, R, T, and S. I, this is our interest in dollars. P, P stands for principal, or how much it's worth today, so principal or today's dollars. R, R is our interest rate, so the percentage. T, T is our time. Now for time, there's two ways we can do time. We can do time in days, or we can do time in months. And it just depends on what the question says. If we use days, then you have to divide by the 365. If you use months, then you have to divide by 12. So just be careful what the question says. If they want you to use days, you want to divide by 365. If they want you to use months, you divide by 12. Finally, S. S stands for maturity value. So what it's worth in the future. So future value. Okay, so those are our symbols for simple interest. Here's our formulas that we're going to use for simple interest. We can use the basic one, I equals P times R times T. So this is for finding I, but we can also take this formula and we can rearrange it to find any of these letters. Now, you can use a triangle method where I is on top of the triangle and the PRT is on the bottom of the triangle. And depending on which one you want to find, all you do is you just cover it up with your finger and that will give you your formula to find that letter. So if I wanted I, I just cover up the I, there's my formula. If I want P, cover up the P, there's my formula. I want R, cover up the R, there's my formula. And if I want T, I just cover up the T and there's my formula. So this triangle, if it helps you, on the test, write out the triangle, put the I on the top, PRT on the bottom, and then you just cover up the one that you're looking for. The second formula here, this is our maturity value calculation, and we can also use this to find P. Now, you can't use it to find R or T. To find R or T, you actually have to revert back to the original equation. But you can use this also to find P, and P would be S divided by 1 plus R T. This last formula at the bottom here, sometimes you need to find I, and you're given maturity value and the principal. So you just take the maturity minus the principal to get I, and then once you have I, you then can go back to this original equation and find R and T, just depending on what you're looking for. It just depends on the question. All right, so there's our formulas for simple interest. Now let's try a question. Let's get the calculator in here. Is that good? Okay. All right, so our calculator. So now let's see what the question wants us to do. So. You're about to start school on August 25th of 2008, and you will need $3,000 for tuition and books. How much would you have to invest on April 28th, 2008 at 4.5% per annum? Now, for time, time is not really given to you as a number of days, so we need to figure out the days between April 28th, 2008 and August 25th, 2008. And to do that, we can use this date function down here above the one. And to get into it, you go second one, so second date. All right, let's turn that calculator on. Let's go second one. Now, the first thing that comes up is DT, DT1. DT1 stands for date one. Date one will always be the earlier date. So this is always going to be the earlier date. So this April, April will be the earlier date. Now, my calculator is set up to go month, day, year. Um, if, you, 
If you're not sure how your calculator is set up, whether it goes month, day, year, or day, month, year, what you actually want to do is you want to look under the format. You actually have to go second format, and format is above the decimal point at the bottom. So let's just go second format. And then what you do is you push the down arrow one, two, two times, and this is where it will tell you how your calculator is set up for, uh, for your date function. As you can see, mine is set up in the US method where it goes month, day, year. And if I change that by going second enter, then it's European and it becomes day, month, year. I just find it easier to, uh, to have it in the U US method than the European because then it's month, day, year. It just depends on how your calculator is set up. Uh, that's, that is how you set it up if you want to change it to European or, U uh, or US. I find it easier to be in US than in European. Let's go back into the date function now that I know I am in the US mode. So it goes month, day, year. So then we need to know that April is the fourth month. So then I want to type in the four decimal point, 28. And then what you do is you just type in the last two years of the, the whole year. So I have to type in the 08. So four decimal, two, eight, oh, eight. And then I have to push the enter button. If you do not push the enter button, the, the number will not stay in your date function. So there we go, 428-2008. Now we push the down arrow once to go to DT2. DT2 is date 2. And date 2 should always be the later date. And the later date in this question is the August 25th, 2008. So now we need to remember what month August is. Now, if you're, not sh if you're never sure what month it is, you can just use what's called the finger method. And it's just a simple trick. You just start with January, and then you go January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. Now, I went around my fingers once and came back to the thumb and then counted three more times. So now I know that August is the eighth month. So then eight decimal. 2508, oh and then the enter button. So 8, decimal, 2508, oh enter. Then we push the down arrow. This brings us to DBD. DBD stands for Days Between Dates. And at this point, what you want to do is you want to push the CPT Compute button. So CPT Compute, there we go. Our days are 119. So for time, time is going to be 119 divided by 365. Now, this doesn't quite answer the question, but it does give us our time. Now, let's go through the question again, and let's just figure out what they want us to figure out, because we kind of did a little side trip here to figure out time, but it was necessary because we needed to know that. Okay, so now you can just push the clear button a couple of times. That'll clear that. So let's see. So let's see, um, you're about to start school, August 25th, 2008, and you know you will need $3,000 for tuition and books. Now, this 3000 is how much we need on August 25th, 2008. So this 3000 is a maturity value, so this is actually S. And then it says, how much would you have to invest? Invest is a word we can use for principal or present value. This is a pr principal or present value word. And then the 4.5%, this is our interest rate, which is R. Okay, so we've got our S. Our S is 3,000. We have our R, it's 4.5. We have our T, 119 over 365. So now if you remember from our formula page, I said we could find principal by taking S and dividing it one by 1 plus R times T. So if we fill in the numbers, 3,000 will go on top, divided by 1 plus, now the four, it's 4.5 percent, so we need to change that to a decimal by moving the decimal place two places to the left. So if I move that two places to the left, I got an add a zero, and then the decimal place will go in front of the zero, and make it 0 .045. So there is another video you can watch that will show you how to change percents into decimals. I guess we can edit the name in later, right? Sure. Okay.
Okay, so if we change that, we got a 0 0.045, and then our time, so times the 119 over the 365. Okay, so to do this on our calculator, we'll start by doing the division, because according to our bed mass, division is done before anything else. So, we'll take the 119 divided by the 365 equals, then we will multiply it times the rate of 0 0.45, so point didn't hit the times button. Okay, bring that back. Times 0 0.045. And then we'll add the 1 equals. So this is our number that goes on the bottom of our equation. So as you can see, it's a rather big number. I'm going to refer you back to our store and recall video. You can go and uh, just, if you don't remember how to store and recall, uh, for st the storing function, you press the STO button, and then you can store in anywhere from 0 to 9. Any of the number buttons is where you can store a number. So I'm going to go store 1. So I'm going to go STO 1, and this now saves that number in the calculator, so I'm going to push the clear button. So now I want to take the 3,000 and divide it by this big long decimal. So I'm going to go 3,000 divided by, and then recall 1 equals. So there we go. This is how much money we must invest today in order to have $3,000 on August 25th of 2008. So we need to have $2,956.62 invested on April 28th so that we can have $3,000 on August 25th, the day school starts. This has been a presentation of the Wise Guys videos. If you have any problems, you can get a hold of Ron Hammerling in the Learning Assistance Center. Thank you and have a good day.